time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Last week we took a look at one of the coolest vehicles from 82, the HAL. It's only second to uh, the VAMP as far as the cool factor goes. And I really appreciated it as a kid. I got a lot of playtime with it. I appreciate it even more as an adult. So I, I, it's the, the art behind it, the, the complex sculpting that went along with it, the attention to detail, just everything that you overlook as a kid, just take for granted or don't even pay attention to. Um, so I, I really, really do appreciate the responses that I got from that. The, it's all been positive and thank you guys very much for that. I, I love hearing from you. I love talking about uh, the review or any other um, action figure out there that happens to come to mind. Um, it's, it's great uh, meeting with you guys, um, talking online. It's, it, it would be really cool if I could meet you all in person someday. Honestly, that would uh, really be uh, just a, a high, highlight of, of my uh, YouTube career. Uh, and highlight in my life as well. I already met with one viewer, um, Duke 45 Toys. Um, uh, just the privilege of living in the uh, same state and neighboring cities from one another, it helps. But um, if I can make it out to Joe Fest, I hope I can run into some of you and shake your hand and uh, just thank you in person. But let's get into the review. Today we're going to be looking at a figure from 1986, my favorite year of G.I. Joe. Uh, there's a lot of 85 fans out there, and for very good reason. There were a lot of superb figures that came out in 85 that have a, a strong fan following. And 85 was the pivotal, 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 learn how to speak, year because it added the ball joint neck and that was just as good or better than the swivel arm battle grip instead of having the arm sticking straight out or cocked back to you know you get a, a more realistic pose with the, the weapon and um, it, it just revolutionized G.I. Joe. So we are going to be looking at the 1986 Lifeline. Now, Lifeline, I have some fond memories of him. My um, old buddy John, uh, he, oh, I think he had every G.I. Joe under the sun, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, and he did have he did have Lifeline, and um, I just thought he was just the coolest thing. And the, the character that he personified in the cartoon and the action figure confused me. In the cartoon, he was a pacifist, mm -hmm. a conscientious objector, if you will. He served in the military, but he did not carry a weapon. He absolutely refused to carry a weapon. And the one of the episodes that I liked with him in it was the Million Dollar Medic, where he ends up saving this little rich girl and she just adorns him with all these wonderful gifts. And at the end, he had a, she gave him a, a gold or a platinum. <laughs> helicopter. I mean, just all 80, 80s grandiose beauty gives him a, a freaking helicopter and it's too heavy to take off. They crash the airfield, but it's laser proof, blah, blah, blah. And he just ends up having to give back all of these things to this girl because it it's unethical to um, <laughs> accept personal gifts from a patient. I'm just speaking this from a, you know, a healthcare provider's point of view. They taught us in college that if 
a family member or a patient wants to give you a gift, uh, it's unethical to accept that for yourself. But what you can do is accept and say, I, I'll be glad to share this with the department as a whole. Uh, share it with the rest of the staff. And um, that way you're not create you're not offending the person by seeing refusing their gratuity in the same time you're not breaking the law either or compromising your ethics mm. and um, I've run into that situation many times I've even had people just come up and stuff money into my pockets. Hey, you know, you take great care of my mom, take great care of my dad. Oh, and they, this happened more in nursing homes, but you know, they'd shove money. And I, I can't, sorry, I can't. <laughs> and then they're like, uh uh. And in that situation, I'd say, okay, I will accept this only if I could share it with the others. And they, okay, that's fine. So I'll buy a pizza or whatever. So I was able to, to get around it. And it, it always seems to, to satisfy that fact. So that's the whole thing with, with that particular story with Lifeline, having to um, return all those things, uh, especially that dopey uniform that she gave him with the ascot, totally out of military regs. <laughs> oh, it was nuts. So... <laughs> That confused me because Lifeline, the action figure, came with a pistol. And yeah, he has to have some way of defending himself and defending his patients out in the battlefield. Um, but there was one case, I remember a true story. I wish I could remember the name of this medic in World War II. Uh, he was a conscientious objector just flat out refused to carry a weapon and he went into combat um, and and treated um, fallen soldiers under heavy enemy fire and he was in Iwo Jima he was in the Pacific theater so he was a marine and um, a story had come back that a uh, a Japanese sniper reported every time he tried to take a shot at this one American who didn't have a weapon, his gun would jam. True story. It, it, it's a true story, and I honestly wish I could have found more information about that online. It, a movie was made about him. And... Um, yeah, but the, his weapon jammed every time he tried to shoot that one particular um, medic. And, um, you know, so that it is, you know, there are people out there who, who do that. The military frowns on it, of course, but they will not say, you know what, we don't want you because you won't carry a weapon. So, 86 Lifeline. Well, when we take a look at the figure, he came with some accessories, but what Kellogg would I be without the Rice Krispies Kellogg Release Lifeline? And there's something interesting about him that goes along with the conscientious objector um, story. So let's go ahead and continue with all this just give you a little bit of background um, when lifeline came out in 86 he came out as a part of the fifth series uh, he was on the shelves until 1988 when he was discontinued but that same year boom tiger force came out and they brought out tiger force lifeline and i already reviewed uh, tiger force lifeline uh and we'll just take a brief look at him as well. But, um, so, in 1991, there was still a surplus <sighs> of Lifeline out there. Uh, so, Hasbro got together with the Kellogg Cereal Company. And yes, I am a, a descendant of that company. Third great nephew of the owners. 
Uh, don't see any of the money. Big family fallout and the sole inheritor was disinherited because he married outside of his social class and that cut out the family. So, only if I could film without my phone ringing. So, uh, Kellogg's released, uh, got in collaboration with Hasbro and they released the 1991 version of Lifeline. And I'll explain the differences when we go and take a look at him. So, without any further ado, and catawalling and jaw flapping, let's go ahead and take a look at these, this figure. I re I've been waiting a long time to review this one because I was wanting to get the Kellogg Lifeline at a decent price. And I happened to get him um, just by himself without the accessories that he came with. And I think it's like five bucks. I, I have scads of accessories for him, so it wasn't a problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at him. Come on. Touch screens. You're supposed to modernize, make life easier. Right, so here they are. The 86 Lifeline and 91 Lifeline. So let's go ahead and just take a look at their accessories. They are, they both came with the same um, uh, first aid kit. Um, the 91 did not come with the oxygen mask or the pistol but he did come with the same um, communications style backpack. And uh, we'll look at the accessories closer, but I want to point out the difference. Can you see the difference? At a glance, I didn't know there was a difference. I honestly didn't. It wasn't until um, HCC 788 did a very comprehensive uh, review slash discussion on a variant as far uh, variant from a second version, and um, this is enough of a distinction where if I could remember correctly, it made it a second version. Well, the Kellogg company did not want Lifeline to come with any weapons at all. Um, as you can see on the 86 version, he has a gun sculpted onto his legs. So what they did was kept the upper body and the waist piece, but used the legs off of um, Frostbite version one. And therefore you do not have a gun, but he still has the empty holster, which is fine. So that is the, another version of Lifeline. Um, the, like I said, his, First aid box is the same, you know, it has the oxygen set up in there. Looks like a defibrillator, thermal blanket, but doesn't come with an oxygen mask. So go ahead and set him off to the side. And let's look at the accessories just a little bit closer. Uh, this is a great backpack as far as backpacks go. Uh, it is a communication style backpack. It would have to be. Um, I'm sure there's diagnostic equipment on here as well as it looks like a video monitor and a um, speaker. That way he could talk to Doc while he's out in the field, get further uh, help with things. Because he, he, I shouldn't say just a medic because you're never just a medic. 
Um, he is, doesn't have the, the advanced training of a doctor, so he would need Doc's opinion out there quite often, I'm sure. So this is a great backpack. I love it. Speaking of oxygen, I'm getting a little winded. But it um, comes with an oxygen mask, which um, plugs right into the backpack, uh, into his case. And, uh, you know, this was pretty cool stuff when I was a kid. I still loved it. Um, and it opens right up. The same thing. And uh, he came with a sidearm. Looks like a 45. And uh, Tiger Force Lifeline came with the same stuff, of course, different colors. Um, so he has these uh, green glasses, which really helps offset the red and white. And kind of a Christmas looking dude. Very nice. He has sculpted on goggles on his mountaineering helmet, uh, covering his jet black hair. Uh, he has straps that fit over his backpack or for his backpack. You now some pouches there on his arms. Uh, he looks like he's wearing a flight suit, which makes makes sense. And uh, more pouches here. And, uh, flight suit has a nice little zipper down the front. Uh, some more pouches down on the legs. Uh, gooseneck flashlight on that leg. Pistol on that leg. Of course, it says rescue. And he wears the G.I. Joe medic emblem, which was used. Let me go get him. I should have brought him out. Which again was used for Stretcher on his little air chariot slash gurney thing. Uh, I'll review him definitely as I, I love the medical guys. So Lifeline is a very sharp figure. I really like him. Great, great figure. Great sculpt, great color, everything. When 88 came around, they gave us Tiger Force. And then, uh, let's see, Core Lifeline, which was the actually the very first Lifeline that I owned. He came with a vicious swaths of your atypical 90s accessories, and I'll share those when I review him. Uh, the bugger is the microphone that he had mounted on the side of his helmet that broke off and um, I'm not going to hunt one down sorry I don't want to spend $35 on another piece of plastic that I'll probably lose again so so Lifeline he's, he's had a pretty good run so this is versions 1 through 4 And then, voila, this, uh, they changed his name to um, uh, Edwin Steen uh, for, for this. And this is, is definitely a deluxe um, action figure, definitely... Uh, geared towards adults, adult collectors. When I review him, you'll see why, because there's so many tiny accessories that they will just get lost. And uh, his helmet does come off. Pretty cool. And the signature black hair. So he is a cool action figure. And I bought him several months back before the prices of him just got absolutely insane. I got he and the modern doc together. I went and read this whole file card to you guys and I forgot to press record. <laughs> oh, I love it. So you see, clipped off of the card back, um, 
There is a variant on this file card which has a sticker uh, for Sergeant Slaughter version one uh, for that mail away. And um, I must thank a good friend of mine, Ben Carson, um, for providing me with this lifeline uh, a few years back. I uh, really appreciate you, Ben. Uh, bought a lot of Joes from him in the past. and. Uh, my find, I think, was one of the first that I bought from him. Uh, so, let's read the file card again. Uh, code name is Lifeline. He's a rescue trooper. File name, Steen Edward C. Um, serial number, RA-12803-2496. Primary military specialty, medic. Birthplace, Seattle, Washington. And I think... I'm not 100% sure on this. If you guys know anything different, let me know. But I think this is the only G.I. Joe that does not have a secondary military specialty. He is just a medic flat out. He's not a fireman. They already have their fireman barbecue. They have their flight medic, which they needed. Uh, they were starting to phase dock out, and they gave us Lifeline for the new new lot of figures and uh, mm. lifeline paired up with lift ticket quite often and they flew together in the, the tomahawk and that was another really interesting episode with lifeline where um cobra hacked gi joe computer system and uh, gave all the people who were would have conflicting personalities promoted them to higher ranks and Lifeline took off the weapons from from the tomahawk and he says I'm not going to arm a rescue chopper and he had the uh, shipwreck he did something with the the maulers and um, they thought that you know they thought the cannons were powered down but they weren't and you know a lot of G.I. Joes got hurt, and of course Hawk came back and you know, fixed mm. everything. And he, of course, bo bolstered their their morale by saying, you know, you know, Lifeline, you have the the skills to be a good leader, but this is why you can't and shipwreck. You have the skills to be a good leader, but you're a buffoon kind of thing. So <laughs> it, it was a, another really good episode starring Lifeline. So back to it. Yes, he is just, he, he is a medic and that's it. That's all he does for G.I. Joe. Uh, his middle paragraph reads, Lifeline was a para, uh, paramedic with the Seattle Fire Department for five years before he discovered that EMS, uh, Emergency Medical Service, uh, personnel who were disabled while giving aid off duty were not eligible for pensions. That would really hack me off too. And um, I know of a case um, where there were two two paramedics, actually two EMTs, were on their day off, and um, they were rendering aid at a car accident that they saw that. It, he and his partner were just going out to the lake to go fishing for the day and they stopped to render aid and um, the car that they were helping was hit by a drunk driver. Uh, the person I'm talking about was paralyzed. Um, it was made a, a paraplegic uh, from that and he, he didn't get any pension from that I know of. But uh, he did get a very nice insurance settlement. So yeah, that would really tick me off. You're you're doing what you love to do. You get hurt and find out, sorry, no money for you because you weren't hurt on the job. So in his mind, rescue personnel were never off duty, and that is the truth. You are never, ever off duty. Uh, I, I remember this was hammered into me in school. When you're not working, 
get your mind far away from work and just relax. You do need that mental break. And I'll tell you, it is very difficult to not talk about work, to not think about work. Uh, I have friends at church who are in the healthcare industry. And what do we do when we see each other on Sunday? I got to start talking about work. And that's fine because we, we could relate and decompress um, through, through our stories. And um, I carry first aid equipment in my car and I stop for car accidents and help as much as I can until uh, paramedics could arrive to offer better aid. Okay, so there's my, my little tangent there. Uh, further reads, um, he decided to make his status permanent by enlisting in the army as a corpsman. Okay, very noble of him. And I just love that card art. Very intense looking guy. And at the bottom, it reads in quotes, elite units always take care of their own. The Joes are no exception. The troops have to know that if something really heavy um, comes down on them, they and they're in no condition to walk out of the mess, somebody's going to have to have the heart to wade in and extract them. That somebody is lifeline. And that is the truth. You have incredibly courage, uh, courageous. Every soldier is, of course, but medics especially, because they have to really, I mean, put their butts out there to, you know, to some of the stories my dad shared from being a medic. But um, I also want to dedicate this um, review to another friend, um, New Jersey Ed, who was a firefighter out in, um, out in Jersey. So Ed, this is for you too, buddy. Uh, thank you very much for serving. Uh, you, you guys are amazing. All, all firemen, <laughs> just amazing people. Um, great sense of humor. You have to, really. So, um, I don't know if you guys could tell that I'm really passionate about this action figure. <laughs> I just love this guy. Um, so, let's get into my favorite se segment here. Byron's Gripes. Yes. Yes, sirree. Um, there's one thing that really annoys the heck out of me outside of very high prices is when somebody puts next to it rare and you go down the list and there are 900 of the rare action figures. I know it's, it's a selling point. It's a bullet point, whatever you want to call it. See rare. Oh my gosh. It makes you want to look at it. Very skillful sales, but no, they're not rare. Uh, no, 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 no. So that, that annoys me. Um, so you want a complete lifeline with a full file, full file card, full card back uncut $34.99. Uh, uh, seeing that just four, five months ago, I've seen him go for $15. No, that's 35 bucks. Bugger me. And the, the prices are all, are all over the map with him right now. Loose, complete lifeline, $13.99. Okay, pretty decent, $13.99. I would call that the deal of the day. Because he's loose and he's complete. $13.99 to $33. Yeah, you pay extra $1.99 for a full uncut card. $33, bucks, really? They're not rare. So, you know, you have... 
there's plenty of them out there, guys. You know, be patient. Wait for <laughs> the prices to drop. Uh, incomplete. Uh, 12 bucks. Uh, it just, just came with his uh, first aid kit. Loose and incomplete. Uh, no file or with the file card. Twelve ninety nine. Okay, that one. Uh, he had his backpack, first aid kit, and that was it. So twelve ninety nine for that. Just um, alone. Five dollars to eight fifty four. Just the action figure by himself, and his accessories are very cheap. So it would not be unreasonable to pay five bucks and buy a dollar ninety nine backpack and first aid kit, but pay attention to shipping because that will get you try to get it from the same seller that way they'll combine shipping. Mm. Okay, so that would be that's a pretty decent. Uh, way of going about this for his first aid kit 250 to 499 come on really 499 499 I have three of these and I got two of them in a bag of junk I shouldn't say a bag of junk but a bag of parts for GI Joe so, I mean, they're, they're not uncommon. So, no, I would not pay $4.99 for that. His gun, $3.99 to $10. Bucks. Really, $10. They're Battlefield accessory guns. They're brown, and the backpack is brown. Uh, those go for about $1.99. If you don't care, pardon me, if you don't care about the color, do that if you want to complete a lifeline. Oh, uh, ten bucks. I, uh, the oxygen mask, four ninety nine, or four dollars to four ninety nine. Um, eh, okay. They're not really uncommon, but a lot of times what I've found people clipped the band off of it so you can't actually affix it to the back of a or affix it to uh, another action figure's head and um, that kind of um, ruins the whole thing so i i could kind of yeah, justify that uh, his backpack is the most common accessory um dollar fifty to a dollar ninety nine the silver backpack, uh, which the 86 and 91 came with, is a softer plastic. The Tiger Force backpack is is black. It's made out of a harder plastic. And I didn't recognize, didn't notice this until I did the review, but the antenna was broken off. So something to look out for on that if you're going for the Tiger Force. Now, there is one out there for Fun School, uh, $109.99, in all of its gory, crazy Fun School colors. And I, if you want to look it up, man, look it up. Uh, look it up on eBay, just put in Fun School Lifeline, you'll, you'll see it. He's pretty cool. I tried to download the picture to put it in with this, and I, I couldn't, so sorry. Uh, okay, so if you want... The Rice Krispies lifeline, as he is known amongst collectors. If you want him mint and sealed bag, 22 bucks. That's about average for a mint sealed action figure. Uh, one that's open and complete. And again, to reiterate, it's just the backpack and the first aid kit. Uh, Fourteen ninety nine, pretty decent. That that is decent for that. Um, now this is something. Don't let people try to fleece you on this. Uh, just a, a forewarning. 
uh, mint sealed with file card, 15 bucks. The Rice Krispie Lifeline did not come with a file card. He did not. Okay, so don't let somebody try to tell you, yes, he did come with a file card because he didn't. It is the same file card from 86. And to cut back on cost, they just put him in a bag and changed his legs. So, yeah, again, look out for the one without the gun. That's the, the Rice Krispie lifeline. Um, I've seen just in the past that mistakenly the seller uh, was selling the 86 as the 91 and I'm sure it was just an oversight because at a glance it is something you can easily overlook. Um, so you want one that's complete and open um, $11.99 to $15.99 um, that kind of I just said that twice so it was 11 so yeah $11.99 <laughs> $14.99 and $15.99 are the prices I found on that uh, so yeah um fun school of course is going to run you higher because they are rare here in the united states um so i highly recommend you get a lifeline if you don't already have him and you get the 86 you have to get the 91 they just complement each other and if you're really ambitious go after the modern um, he comes with great accessories. Um, the last time I checked on his prices, 75 bucks, loose, complete, like 110 to 125 carded. Um, and I could see why. It's just a, a great figure. He's a deluxe figure. Definitely worth um, buying. So... All that being said, what a review. Um, and I thought I liked the how. <laughs> I, I really enjoy the, the medical G.I. Joes. Um, it's uh, definitely inspired through my dad, through his stories. And um, just from, you know, ever since I can remember, I wanted to be in healthcare. So it's, it's something I would say is genetic. So my dad was very good at what he did. And um, he carried that off into civilian life. He, of course, wasn't a, didn't want to be a paramedic in the civilian life. It, was, it just reminded too much of the war but he was the neighborhood doctor in a little village we lived in, unofficial. You know, the kids would get hurt and they'd come over, hey, let's go go see go see the Kellogg's dad, you know, and he'll fix him up. And I remember seeing him um, help kids with cuts and bruises and of course me splitting my head open as a kid. One, two, on oh, my chin, three. Uh, <laughs> dad fixed this one. Had to go to the hospital for that one and this one. Stitches here. And they did a neat little technique back of my head. Just a quick story. They tied my hair in a knot because the doctor didn't want to traumatize me. I was eight years old. So he tied my hair and pulled the scalp together that way. And after like 10 days, you cut, they just cut the knot of hair out and you'll be fine. So that was... That was an interesting technique, and with my chin, I was nine, so I did eight, nine, nine. <laughs> I don't want to get all into it, but uh, the doctor, when he numbed up, up my chin, he just put a gauze pad on my chin and dumped um, 
lidocaine into it and that it numbed it so you wouldn't have to traumatize me by injecting me with needles. And um, so, yeah, medicine is just fascinating to me. The human body is fascinating and I'm just dragging this out. So thank you guys very much for tuning in, especially to my new subscribers. Thank you guys very, very much. Um, I've subscribed to your channel back once I, I saw it. you guys have sub subscribed to mine. Um, also, if you feel like leaving me a, a tip to help out the channel, uh, I have a coffee account and uh, of course uh, my um, GoFundMe page for Joe Fest. None of it is necessary. I don't expect you guys to do it. Um, I've had some very, very generous donors out there and I thank you for that. I responded back with an email that GoFundMe has set up and I hope that you guys got those um, emails. I honestly do. Um, it, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, as I, I would love to get out to Joe Fest, meet you guys, meet Sarge, meet HCC 788. Um, just interesting, just be interesting to see what his panel, he does for his panel. He's, if you follow his channel, um, you know how precise and thorough he is. And I know he will give a good panel. And here we go again. So thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate you. Uh, so all that being said, this is Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. You guys have a great day. Be kind to each other. Be kind to animals. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.